Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, I'm going to be talking about the new album from Jamie XX, In Color. So I didn't really know what to expect going into this album. Like, I was kind of familiar with the work of the XX, which Jamie XX is from. And I had heard some of his remixes on that Jill Scott Heron compilation were new here. So I got intrigued when Jamie XX was coming out with a new album, and it received several rave reviews from all sorts of different critics, saying that this is one of the best albums of the year. Really? One of the best of the year? Huh. I better check it out then, huh? So, how did it turn out? Well... Pretty dang good, if I have to say so myself. I feel like this album is kind of, like, trying to be one big mood piece along the lines of, say, Burial's Untrue or something like that, but not quite as depressing. There's also a surprising amount of variety on this album, which, um, strangely enough, I almost kind of wish there was less variety because, um, it would help to make that whole mood piece thing work better, kind of like, um, Burial's Untrue, I don't consider that a great album because it had a lot of variety. I consider it a great album because he nailed that mood, like, perfectly. But I'm not here to talk about Burial, I'm here to talk about Jamie XX. And honestly, um, the Burial comparisons do come in a lot near the beginning, especially on the tracks Gosh and Seesaw. Gosh has, like, a really hard-hitting percussion track and a lot of pitch-shifted vocals, which Burial does a lot. And then Seesaw uses this, um, vocal sample from the XX singer Romy, which I could have sworn was in a Burial song at some point. I looked through his discography and couldn't find it, so I assumed that Romy actually sung it for the song, which would make sense. But the way that Romy is, like, pun sort of intended buried in the mix of the song, and uh, her voice has a lot of reverb attached to it, it does remind me a lot of Burial in that regard. Even so, just, just the timbre of Romy's voice just seems to match perfectly with the ethereal tones and samples that Burial uses on his Untrue album. But, uh, I think that's enough Burial comparisons for now. There are nine other tracks on this album, and I think the Burial comparison only works for those two songs in particular. There are other bands that Jamie XX reminds me of. For instance, on the track Ups, that track kind of reminds me of Plaid, with its steel drum sounds at the beginning. That's kind of a happier song, I like that one. Now there's also this band I like called Bent that I think uh, Jamie XX reminds me of. How to describe these guys? They, um, they use a lot of vocal samples and they tend to have kind of a very light and whimsical, happy atmosphere, but at the same time kind of a little quirky as well. There are a couple of songs on In Color that kind of remind me of Bent. I think Sleep Sound, Loud Places, and Girl kind of do. Sleep Sound kind of has this uh, male chorus that kind of reminds me of the Bent song Invisible Pedestrian. Loud Places has like this big triumphant chorus sample. This track also has Romy on it. Though her voice does sound very similar to the way it did on Seesaw, um, her vocals are a lot more up front. They're at the front of the mix instead of blending in the background. But I do really like that track, mainly because of that chorus sample. Less so is, um, Girl. I think I would like this track a lot more if it weren't at the end of the album, because it, it ends really abruptly, and I'm just like, really? That's how it ends? You just cut off like that? That's, that's, that's stupid. Granted, this track is, it's a good one, it's a catchy one, but again, I would have liked this song a lot more if it weren't the ending. Especially considering that the fact that there's another song called The Rest Is Noise that I think would have worked for a much better ending. The Rest Is Noise has like this really nice progression, kind of meanders around a little bit. It starts with some really nice piano sounds, then it 
then it like pretends to fade out and then just comes back in full force. This song should have been the ending. It, it was probably my favorite track on the album. As for the other tracks, well, um, first of all, there's Stranger in a Room. This isn't really one of my favorites, mainly because, um, it's not because of Oliver Sim himself. His vocals are pretty good, and I think because of him, this song has been growing on me more and more as I listen to this album more. But this song doesn't really stick out to me because um, it has a really minimalistic production that um, doesn't really stand out that much. It's a little too simplistic compared to the rest of the album. So on my first couple of listens on this album, I did kind of find this track to be a bit boring. This track has grown on me, but it is still kind of one of my least favorites. On the less subtle end, we have I Know There's Gonna Be Good Times. This song has Young Thug on it, and he is probably my least favorite thing about this album. At first I thought he was talking about molesting, Come to play, but then I looked up the lyrics for this song and it turns out he actually says, I'm a listen. I'm a listen. Uh, you don't pronounce the T in listen, young thug. Yeah, that line doesn't bug me that much. Actually, the line that kind of distracts me on this song is, um, like, there's this one line where he's talking about having sex with a hooker. She gon' get on top of the dick and she gon' squish it like squish it. Thank you, young thug. That was vital information we really needed to hear. I know I usually don't care about lyrics, but... I do care about them when they're distracting. But this song, Saving Grace, is that it is very uplifting. It's probably the happiest sounding song on this album. It, it puts me in a good mood, even though I kind of get the feeling that Young Thug has no idea what he's doing. Then there's some songs like Just Saying. You know, a lot of people didn't really like this one because it was short. But, um... I actually like this one quite a bit. Like, it started out with a slow synth build and then just kind of faded out into just a bunch of piano chords. I like this one. Overall, though, I really did enjoy this album. I may have my nitpicks with it. I do have, I do have my small problems with this album, but the problems aren't really big enough to really take away from my enjoyment. It is unlike anything else on the electronic charts right now, and I am glad to see some sounds that I usually associate with more obscure bands kind of come into a more, more mainstream audience. Kind of wish more people would check out those more obscure bands. Bent in particular are awesome. I'll have to cover them later. But it's an enjoyable album from start to finish. I can see myself returning to this album many times in the future. Like, I don't see myself returning to Galantis anytime soon, but I've listened to this album several times already. I really only listened to Pharmacy a couple of times. This one is really engaging for me. I really enjoyed this one. Overall, I'm feeling an 8.3 out of 10 on it. Favorite songs are Gosh, Sleep Sound, Seesaw, Ob's Just Saying, Loud Places, and The Rest Is Noise. Least favorite song... I'm gonna go with Hold Tight, just because it doesn't really stand out that much. But, you know what, it doesn't really matter. I don't really have a least favorite on this one. They're all good. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Jamie XX's In Color. Um... What should I review next? Just talk about it in the comments, and apologies for the fan sound in the background because um, it's kind of hot today, but whatever. That's all for today. See